So I have a confession to make. I used a manual blood pressure cup and I liked it. What's up everyone, Christina, nurse practitioner here. So I was doing my rounds and I had to check my patient's blood pressure, but for some reason my automatic machine wasn't working. So I ended up using a manual blood pressure cuff I had on hand. And I gotta say, the old fashioned way worked like a charm. Quick, accessible, accurate, and I was done. In this video, I will be discussing the need to know information about vital signs and normal versus abnormal, so stick around. The equipment you'll need to check your patient's vital signs includes a blood pressure cuff. If it's a manual cuff, make sure you have your stethoscope, a thermometer to check temperature, a pulse ox to measure oxygen saturation, and a watch or clock to count heart rate and respirations. And most importantly, always do your hand hygiene with standard precautions, and while in a pandemic, please wear your mask. Before you start, build rapport with your patient, introduce yourself, talk to them, ask for permission before you start doing your vital signs. It goes a long way. I like to start with asking, are you having any pain today? I use a numeric pain scale. With zero is no pain, 10 is the worst pain ever. This scale is used for your alert and oriented patient. For your patient that is in a different setting, such as the ICU, it would be your CPOT, which is your critical care pain observation tool. This would be your patient that can't verbally speak to you or likely they're intubated or on propofol. Another scale that is used is your Wong Baker scale, which is the face scale, which you could determine the level of pain. Typically when a patient has pain and they give me a number, so let's say they give me the number eight, and so their pain is at an eight, I usually like to ask them, where are you usually at your best where it's tolerable? So tolerable for them may be a four, sometimes it's a six, it just varies from patient to patient. In addition to pain, you also wanna be familiar with the type of medications they're on. So knowing what PRN medications they have, knowing what type of medications is available. Sometimes they may have Dilaudid, they may have oxycodone. It just varies from patient to patient and depending on why they're there for their hospital admission. So being familiar and comfortable with the medications. Some patients that have severe pain and you're just not able to achieve a tolerable pain level, I usually try to dig a little bit further and I'll ask them like, hey, what type of medications do you take at home? Those are the type of patients typically where they take a lot of narcotics at home because they have chronic pain. It's reasonable. So then therefore, you can always call your healthcare provider and say, hey, this patient only has a Tylenol or Tramadol as a pain medication, but they take Norco and they take about three tablets daily. So that makes a huge difference as far as in the type of care that you could provide. Moving on to blood pressure. So always be familiar with the trends. You always wanna check the patient's blood pressure, make sure their arm is in a neutral position, make sure it's not bent, make sure it's the right cuff. A lot of times, if you check the blood pressure cuff and it's completely elevated and you're wondering why, recheck it or you yourself recheck it. It makes a huge difference. If they're bending their arm, educate them because then it'll be a false blood pressure reading. Also, for the stroke patient, they're gonna have strict parameters, so be familiar with that. Be familiar with the type of medications that you have available, just in case the blood pressure really goes super high or super low. What medications do you have available to support the patient so that way they can keep a safe blood pressure parameter? And for your post-operative patient that may have a lower blood pressure, kind of check what the trends are when they were admitted, where are they sitting at now? That makes a huge difference, and if they're symptomatic. Moving on to respirations. So respirations would be anywhere from 12 to 20. If it's on the lower side, check the responsiveness. Could it be they're overly sedated? Did they receive too much medication? That would prompt you to check their neurostatus. And if you check their neuro status and they're seem, seeming kind of like foggy minded and they're not really responsive, check their oxygen saturation as well. So these are things you could think of. For the patient that has a really high respiratory rate, are they 
anxious? Are they having pain? Is that why they're breathing really fast? Could it possibly be an infection? Is that why they're breathing really fast? These are things that you want to collect when you're gathering this information. Moving on to heart rate. So normal is between 60 to 99. And so if they are running on the lower side, so less than 60, so maybe they're bradycardic, are they symptomatic? Most importantly, are they feeling drowsy, tired, lethargic, non-responsive? These are things you want to gather, especially for the post-operative patient. I tend to notice that especially with the anesthetics that they've received during surgery, when they come out, sometimes their heart rate could run on the lower side. So you wanna be familiar with that and just make sure that they're non-symptomatic. Sometimes the patient's family may get a little anxious because if they see the um, monitor alarm going off, they're gonna be like, why is the alarm going off? Like, what's going on? So you gotta be reassuring and confident with yourself. Um, sometimes you could always send a courtesy message to to the anesthesiologist and say, hey, you know, courtesy message, patient, blah, 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 is running on the lower side. And most likely they don't get worried about it. But if you are worried about it or you're unsure, or if you're in doubt, just always notify a doctor. That's always the best, best suggestion. In addition to a high heart rate. So you wanna think about, okay, why is the patient having a high heart rate? Is it infection? How is the rhythm? Is it regular? Is it irregular? Could they have possibly converted from normal sinus rhythm to atrial fibrillation? What's going on? Do I see ectopy in the, in the monitor? Are they having having any ectopy, if they are having ectopy, how is their electrolyte level? Is their potassium really low? Does it need to be repleted? Is their magnesium really low? Does that need to be repleted? These are things that I gather and collect as I'm looking at a patient's vital signs. So moving on to temperature, the normal is between 97.5 to 99.5. If your patient is less than 97.5, so 96 range and such, are they cold? Why are they cold? Did they just get out of surgery? What is going on? Or the patient that has a elevated temperature, is it a possible infection? Did they just have surgery? Take a look at the surgical site. Are there signs of infection? Maybe they have had a surgery and the actual JP drain, the insertion site, maybe there's redness, maybe there's drainage. Take a look at those things. Maybe they have a pick line that was placed two weeks ago and it's still in place, but now it's looking kind of funny. So try and be the investigator. This is what's gonna get you a step ahead. Gathering this information and communicating it with the healthcare team is gonna make you look great and also be the best advocate for your patient and family. And moving on to saturation. Saturation is usually between 92 to 100%. You always want to monitor the patient that may be um, admitted for respiratory reasons. However, always listen with a stethoscope. Are they having any crackles? Are they wheezing? Is there any wrong guy? Take a look at that. Um, if they need a breathing treatment, you know, reach out to the respiratory therapist, or maybe they don't have a respiratory therapist and it hasn't been evaluated, and this is something that you have found out. Reach out to the doctor and let them know, hey, this patient is being is feeling short of breath and they need to be reevaluated, or maybe they need some oxygen because their oxygen saturation isn't being maintained. So these are things that I want you to be able to collect. Collect. Hope this helps. This is information that I feel would have been so critical for me as a new grad and I want to share this with you and open up a platform that is safe and inviting so that way you can succeed. Again, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for upcoming notifications. Take care.